I've been a licensed commercial drone pilot here in the UK for five years and like anyone who's gone to the time and effort of getting licensed, I take the subject of safety very, very seriously, frowning upon all the numpties on the internet who do stupid things with their drones. That being said, of the six drones that we have owned, I managed to smash one of them in a cliff, destroying it completely. I flew another one backwards into a tree, cracking its shell when it hit the ground on the way back down. Of the other four drones, I've done a pretty good job of almost destroying all of them also on numerous occasions. So. Crashing a drone is a very, very easy thing to do. And we're going to look at 20-ish ways to not crash your drone so you can learn from our experience and our mistakes and avoid stupid things like this happening. Don't ask me why I have a different shirt on and my hair is a little bit longer than it was in the introduction. It's just the magic of television. Now, I'm here to introduce our partner for this video, skywatch.ai. Thank you so much for sponsoring this video, guys. I really wish their on-demand pay-as-you-fly insurance services for drone enthusiasts and drone professionals alike had been around when we started out because we paid a fortune for our drone premiums. Established in the US, now launched in the UK, I definitely recommend you check them out. Also, the safer you fly, the less you pay. I'll be back in a little bit to explain a bit more about that, but in the meantime, back to Red Shirt Stu to crack on with this video. As for the first way to not crash your drone, familiarize yourself with the app. When you're flying your drone in a high pressure environment, that is not the time to be figuring out what all the buttons do on the app. The apps on these things are big, they have lots of menus, sometimes it's a little bit confusing depending on the way your mind works, it might not even be that intuitive. So sit in the house and figure out how to use that app and change your settings under pressure. Tip number two, avoid the automated flight modes until you really understand how they react in any given situation. I'm talking about quick shots, active track, automatic takeoff and landing, pressing return to home to bring your drone home instead of flying it back, things like that. You really need to get into the nuts and bolts of how they work, otherwise you could have a collision on your hands. Tip number three, avoid sports mode. Yes, the drone goes very fast, it looks amazing going at that speed and it sounds fantastic, but stopping distances are increased tremendously and obstacle avoidance is switched off, so it is one of the easiest ways to destroy your drone. Tip number four, do not rely on obstacle avoidance. It's a fail safe, it's a crutch, it's not an excuse for you shutting your eyes and switching your brain off. There are many ways you can still crash your drone with obstacle avoidance switched on. Depending on the drone you have, flying sideways, flying backwards, flying up and down, you can fly into telephone wires. If the light is not good, the obstacle avoidance might not be working. As I say, it's not an excuse for your stupidity. Tip number five, learn to use the map. If for whatever reason you lose sight of your drone and you're getting a bit of a panic as to how to get it back, the map gives you all the information that you need. So learn how to use it. Don't just sit there going, oh, I'll press the return to home button because trust me, that might not always get you back safely. Back again, folks, to give our sponsors skywatch.ai another little nudge. Picture the scene five years ago, I become a licensed drone pilot here in the UK for the first time, so I get my insurance quotes from the two companies providing insurance. 600 pounds, they both say. What, are you serious? 600 quid for drone insurance. Of that 600 pounds, the bulk of the premium was to insure the Phantom 2. I, I couldn't care less about insuring the Phantom 2. It didn't cost that much. I just wanted public liability insurance in the event of a disaster. There's a pretty bad taste in the mouth, but fortunately, Time has passed. New companies have entered the market. Skywatch.ai is one such company. Established in the US, now here with us in the UK, you can secure their job by job policies or secure their insurance on a monthly basis. The cool thing about this company is that starting off as a drone pilot risk assessment app, essentially, if you use their system to control your drone, they will create a safety score for you over time. So your policies will drop as you prove yourself to be a credible and safe drone pilot. They say you can save up to 50% over time. So that sounds worth it to me, given that their premiums are fairly reasonably priced to begin with. So I would definitely check out skywatch.ai. I know I will when we get to the end of our current annual premium. Check out the link in the description below.
Tip number six, use your eyes. Do a sight survey. I know that's so obvious, but trust me, it is very easy in the heat of the moment to stick the drone down, fly up in the air and fly it backwards into a tree that you didn't even know was there. Stating the obvious, but use your eyes. Tip number seven, practice using the return to home function. Yes, it's a fail safe and it's not an excuse for you being a dafty, but there might be times where you need it and it is a fantastic, fantastic function. That being said, it operates in many different ways. Do you know what's gonna happen when the return to home kicks in? Will the drone hover? Will it fly straight back? Is it gonna shoot up in the air? Will it land? There's many different variables going on with the return to home function, so I would definitely suggest you figure out how to use it properly. Tip number eight, do not ignore battery warnings. I have been guilty of this in the past and it has resulted in what is known technically as a squeaky bum moment on more than one occasion. The battery warnings are there for a reason, especially in windy, cold conditions. The battery could tell you that it's got 25%. Oh, I'll get a little bit more flight then it drops to 5% because the battery's cold. Scary, scary stuff, especially if you're flying over water. Understand the battery warnings and don't ignore them. Tip number nine, understand the impact of wind. First of all, it's very much windier in the air than it is on the ground. Second of all, if you take your drone out with the wind behind you over some water, for example, use up half your battery and think, that's okay, I've got half my battery to get back. Well, you don't because your drone's going to be fighting against the wind coming back, so everything's that bit harder. Put it into sports mode if you really have to get an extra boost to get you back, but that might not solve your battery woes. So understand the impact of that wind speed. Tip number 10, wait for a GPS signal lock and a return to home point to be set on your map before taking off. If you don't have the patience to wait an extra 10 seconds, then you probably shouldn't be in control of a drone. Tip number 11, keep your drone in line of sight. Not only is it the law, but it's also a very practical way of not crashing your drone, so I would certainly recommend it. Tip number 12, don't fly backwards. Now, like many of these tips, I'm not really saying never fly backwards, I'm just saying pay special care and attention when flying backwards. You've got your head buried in the screen, the camera and the FPV is telling you what's in front of you, it's not telling you what's behind you. One of the easiest ways to crash your drone is flying backwards into something. Tip number 13, take your time. Now this is a big one because I frequently feel under tremendous pressure flying the drone, particularly at weddings. There's never enough time and it's just horrible. You're trying to do a hundred things at once and the last thing you need is a bit of time pressure making life difficult for you. Try and orchestrate scenarios whereby you have plenty of time. Tip number 14, understand that lateral perception is different from depth perception. So when the drone is going from side to side, it's very easy to see which way it's going. However, when the drone is going forwards and backwards, particularly at a distance, it can be impossible to actually tell which way the drone is going, increasing the chances of an incident. Tip number 15, avoid water. It's not unheard of for drones to just disappear into water <laughs> inexplicably. It's not happened to me, but I certainly don't fancy it. DJI recommends you switch off the visual positioning system because the reflections from the water can mess with the sensors. That could be one explanation. Either way, especially if you're a little bit inexperienced and you get in a bit of a pickle, flying over water is not the time for that to happen. The same goes for clouds. Clouds are wet. You don't want to fly your drone into clouds. Apart from anything else, if your lens comes down covered in condensation, that's absolutely pointless because you're not going to get good footage. Tip number 16, learn how to catch land. On more than one occasion I've taken a drone off safely and comfortably only to then bring it back and think how on earth am I going to land it in that tight little space without smashing the propellers off a bunch of rocks. Hand catching is a very valuable skill, a little bit dangerous, definitely recommend that you wear a glove when doing so but it's a useful skill to have. Tip number 17, keep your drone batteries warm and charged. The batteries that we have do not like the cold. The performance deteriorates significantly in the cold, so keep them nice and warm before a flight on a cold day. Tip number 18, keep your monitor warm and charged. If you're using something like an iPhone, it is basically a big battery and it does not like the cold either. So having your phone switch off unexpectedly in the middle of a high risk maneuver is not a particularly comfortable situation to be in. Tip number 19, be mindful of signal loss. If you consider all the things that transmit a signal about you, 
for example, your Apple Watch, other phones, power lines, radars on boats, buildings, cell phone towers, radio antennas, they all transmit magnetic fields that can interfere with the transmission between your controller and your drone, especially if you're using something like a Mavic Air, which uses a Wi-Fi signal, so it's a weaker system versus the OcuSync of a Mavic 2 Pro, for example, you could have some problems, so be mindful of it. Tip number 20, fly an airworthy drone. Make sure your propellers are in good condition. Make sure the little lugs that hold your propellers on are in good condition. Keep an eye on your battery. Make sure it's clicking in properly, etc, etc. Look after your gear and it will look after you. Tip 21, practice on the DJI simulator. It's a pretty good, pretty accurate wee simulator. Definitely worth having a go on that before you start scooting your drone about for the first time. Finally, tip 22, read the manual, RTFM, read the effin manual. Don't just rely on people like me to tell you what to do and what not to do. Any bozo can get on the internet and pretend they know what they're talking about. The manual provides the information from the horse's mouth. It was by reading the manual that I found out for the first time that initiating return to home within a certain distance of the home point will result in the drone just landing itself. Now, if you took off right next to a body of water, click the button for whatever reason, <laughs> it's just gonna stick itself straight down in the water and that's a pretty stupid way of losing your $1,500 investment. So, read the manual, something to be learnt there. So there you have it, our 22 ways to not crash your drone. Please feel free to leave numbers 23 all the way to 100 in the comments below. I'd love to learn from your experience, we all learn from each other in the comments below. I think your anecdotes are sometimes very, very helpful in that respect. Don't forget to check out the link to our Drone Cinematography Masterclass if you want to get into all this kind of stuff in more detail and really build your skills as a drone cinematographer. And until next time, happy flying.